Unity Dots quick tip of the week. And this week, again, I'm gonna be showcasing how to use the shapes assets inside of a Unity Dots project. Okay, so this is uh, basically the little sample project. Then I'll just kind of show you the end results of what we'll be creating here. Um, but basically, I just kind of have these simple little lines that are kind of moving around here. Um, and uh, yeah, again, this is all kind of rendered with the shapes. And again, you can see that, you know, even though these are simple little lines, we can have them a little bit more configurable or we can make them a little thicker, um, kind of have these end caps. And so, yeah, again, super helpful for debugging. So yeah, the first thing that we need to do is basically create a kind of like base class that we will inherit from. And then um, that way, uh, then basically we can use that particular system to um, basically draw any of these shapes. So uh, the shapes asset has kind of like multiple ways that you can basically draw shapes on the screen. One of them is by using like game object components where you basically just put components on game objects. Um, of course, you know, we're working with an ECS context, that stuff is not available to us. So we do have to use what is known as kind of the immediate mode, which um, the way that it kind of traditionally works is you basically have like this custom mono behavior that you inherit from, and that gives you kind of access to uh, basically call some additional drawing functions to basically draw things uh, within the world. So we've, I've kind of basically took, um, actually learned this from you, Danny. You, I think you kind of <laughs> I recognize all, pretty much all of this code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, um, yeah, you can basically just go open up like the, I think it's called, I think it's just called mono behavior draw, if I remember correctly. Um, and it has like basically all these kind of same things here where it's just kind of like listening to certain events. Um, and then, so yeah, we just kind of need to, um, so yeah, basically in the on start running, we'll subscribe to, uh, the render pipeline managers begin camera rendering event. When that happens, we'll call this draw shapes SRP. And then this draw shapes SRP, what this does is it takes in the scriptable render context, as well as the camera. And then we call this on camera pre-render. Um, and then, so yeah, basically in here, we just do a quick check to, um, you know, make sure that we're not using reflection um, in there. Uh, don't render in reflection probes in case we run the script in the editor. And then um, the one thing that I kind of added in here is a, a layer mask here. So basically if you have a camera where you don't want to um, render the shapes layer, then you can basically ignore that. Um, but yeah, basically if you're not on that layer, um, or, you know, yeah, you should be able to render it. Then we just call this on draw here. Um, you see this on draw is an abstract void. So this is where we basically, um, implement our actual own logic here. So I can basically show you that here. Um, so I just have this kind of simple little node mover system that will go ahead and spawn a couple of these nodes and then, uh, just kind of basically move them like out and in. It's just a, you know, pretty simple little thing here. So this is just kind of like a regular system. And then I have another system, which is this line drawer system. And I'm updating this in the presentation system group. And you'll see that it implements the uh, system base draw. And um, again, this yeah, system base draw is, it, you know, it has everything that a normal system base would. So we do have to implement the on updates function here. Um, and then, yeah, you'll see that we here are overriding the on draw method. And then um, it takes in this camera here. And then all we do is just say using draw.command passing in the camera. Um, we can basically inside here call any of the shapes draw functions. So what I'm done here is I've just done like an idiomatic for each, or I'm just looping through all these things for the lines. And then I'm getting the positions um, from the node A and node B. And then all I'm doing is just calling draw line. Uh, passing in node A position, node B position. Here I'm setting a thickness as well as a color. And of course we can say, you know, change this to anything we want. By the way, you know, use our little kind of Vim motions here where we can move around, right? Look at all these fancy things that I'm doing. We can say change this to, I don't know, blue. And then, so yeah, now when we enter our play mode here, 
you'll see that we're basically drawing all these shapes um, in a blue color here now. So yeah, pretty simple to do. Again, all we need to do is just kind of, um, you know, create that uh, kind of system base, uh, system base draw class here. Um, I will have this up on the um, uh, the GitHub a little bit later today, and then um, yeah, you can also check out this example of this node mover system here uh, with the line drawer system. Um, and again, we have access to all the drawing commands, so you know we can say like uh, can't spell draw. Hello. Um, so yeah, you can draw like circles or spheres or something. Yeah, there's all kinds of, you know, boxes. I guess not a box. I don't know. I don't remember all the commands. And to the guy asking, it. it is indeed a idiomatic for each, the same one that I we talked about on stream. That is correct. Yep. That is looping over every line and then drawing it. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. It's actually you know, pretty simple to use. Uh, there are a couple little quirks with it um, because I think the rendering step happens kind of at like a different portion in the frame than um, like the regular Unity uh, world yes. rendering. So if you're like having things that are in world space, um, well, they're either going to be basically behind all the world geometry or in front of the world geometry, just depending on uh, what render step you use. Again, this one is using the... Um, uh, the camera pre-render, but there's also a camera post-render. So you can just kind of determine if you want them to be basically all behind or all in front of. Uh, well, that. it also depends on, there, there's some 3D uh, spline stuff as well, which doesn't have that restriction in the same way. Right. Because it draws into the C buffer. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Interesting little uh, asset there. And yeah, someone also mentioned last week about another asset called A-Line. Um, so that one, it's uh, not on sale right now, but actually I think it's um, 30 bucks. So I think it's actually a little bit cheaper than shapes on sale. But um, it's, uh, I guess that one is also fully compatible with dots and ECS. Um, and uh, I haven't experimented with that one yet, but um, do you want to check that one out? Because it seems like it'd be good for, again, just kind of drawing. I've never heard of A-Line lines. before. Yeah, and it's actually made by the uh, same guy as the A-Star Pathfinding project that we were just talking about here. Uh, Lucas? No, or... Aaron, 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 Aaron oh, Granberg. Yeah. You know, ECS, it ECS, seems. ECS yeah. and Burst, yeah. So, yeah, I do definitely want to uh, check this one out and, and give it a good 